Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 147 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of pyrrhic victory, which is a victory that inflicts such a devastating toll on the victor that is essentially the same as defeat. The patient presented with angina despite optimal antianginal medications. He had a coronary bypass with lima to LAD and radial graft to obtuse marginal and had a, a culprit lesion in the circumflex with two previous failed CTO-PCI attempts. And this is the dual injection demonstrating the anatomy. There is an osteal circumflex CTO. The obtuse marginal is filling through the radial graft. However, there's a severe lesion in the radial graft proximal to the origin of the obtuse marginal branch. Therefore, there is ischemia on the inferolateral wall, inferior wall, given that this was a left dominant system. So here we have a circumflex CTO with ambiguous proximal cap, length of about 30 millimeters, a bifurcation close to the distal cap, and then uh, there is a radial graft going to the obtuse marginal branch. Our plan was to try first with wire escalation and then retrograde to the radial graft, followed by undergrade dissection and reentry. Undergrade wire escalation attempts were unsuccessful. There was heavy calcification into the circumflex, and uh, the guide wires uh, kept uh, on getting into the subintimal space. There was also significant resistance to guide wire advancement. Eventually, the guide wire advanced, but it was clearly in the subintimal space. And after this, we decided to switch to retrograde. We were using an Amplads, eight friends. AL1 guide catheter into the radial graft, an advanced and turnpike LP microcatheter down to the distal anastomosis, and then did retrograde wire escalation through the turnpike LP. There was a clear distal cap and the wire initially went easily more proximal. But then it was a lot of calcification and difficulty delivering and the whole wire and microcatheter position was lost. We re-engaged the ra radial graft and used a guide catheter extension through which uh, the microcatheter was advanced. Once again, we were able to cross retrograde track uh, with a turnpike LP and uh, repeat uh, the retrograde wire escalation. The retrograde wire did go uh, once again in the subintimal space. We inserted an undergrade guide wire and now we did have um, relatively close proximity of undergrade and retrograde guide wires. However, we did know from previously done CT angiogram that there was significant calcification at this zone. And indeed, it was extremely challenging to make progress and we could not make uh, the undergrade and retrograde guide wires meet despite trying to do attempts with balloon inflation on multiple occasions. What we decided to try next is undergrade dissection re-entry into the circumflex. We really didn't really worry as much about the obtuse marginal that had a nicely patent radial graft, but we wanted to recanalize the distal circumflex. So we tried undergrade dissection re-entry, delivered and stingray guide wire, which seems to be close to the distal true lumen, and then performed uh, uh, re-entry attempts with a stick and swap and double blind stick and swap technique. You can see the guide wire is um, exiting uh, in between the two markers of the stingray balloon, but it's not moving far enough to reach the distal true lumen. And indeed, uh, injection demonstrated that uh, re-entry had actually failed, and there was some distance between the stingray balloon and the distal true lumen. We repeated uh, the reversed cart, uh, um, reverse cart attempts uh, using multiple balloons, 3.0, 3.5, and 4.0 millimeters in size. But once again, it was difficult to make things connected to significant calcification. Eventually, um, we moved uh, the re-entry zone further down. This is again inflation of a large 4.0 millimeter balloon, but it was impossible to track this relatively small distance between the retrograde guide wire and uh, the undergrade balloon catheter. After multiple attempts, we decided to potentially change the re-entry zone and uh, try to do the re-entry zone a little higher up. 
we advanced uh, the retrograde wire in a different plane and then we were able to successfully advance the retrograde guide wire into the guide catheter extension externalize uh, an R350 and then our plan was to actually advance a guide wire through a dual lumen microcatheter into the circumflex which was actually the vessel of origin not the M1 but unfortunately this was unsuccessful confirming that we had dissected earlier on at the bifurcation of the OM1 and the circumflex branch. We did balloon inflation, the subminimal space once again, the so-called investment technique or subminimal plaque modification. And this is an example of a pyric victory, which is a victory that inflicts losses that the victor cannot afford. Here we're able to complete our reverse card, but at the cost of dissection, not allowing us to actually enter into the important distal true lumen which, which was in the distal circumflex. And this is the final result. We can see there is some undergrade flow through the dissection planes, but clearly that's a suboptimal result. And in summary, the lessons here are that number one, severe calcification can hinder crossing both in the undergrade and retrograde direction. In this case, we started our dissection more proximal to go to a different re-entry zone, but that essentially compromised entry into the distal circumflex and uh, made us lose the war, although we won the battle of completing the reverse card, we lost the war of recanalizing the distal circumflex. However, in cases like this, when everything fails, one approach is to, to perform balloon angioplasty that restores some undergrade flow into the vessel, followed by subsequent PCI attempts in two to three months once the dissection planes have healed. Thank you.